Talking to Christopher Reeve. You still wince when someone adds the S to the end of your name by mistake. Uh, never mind, you don't have yeah, to answer I think they that. Be a little more careful. Yeah. I will not mention the word Superman throughout this whole show because I see that it's in your contract. Right. <laughs> I would be kind of interested to know what stages you have man what have been the stages of your ability to become known as something else. How many films does one have to do in plays before people go, hey, uh, it's interesting. Uh, what you really need to do is just make smart decisions after the movie to put you on the mm -hmm. map. And uh, it's almost axiomatic that right after your first big hit, you will make one or two mistakes. Uh -huh. Dustin Hoffman, for example, in my opinion, right after The Graduate made John and Mary, which was like <whistles> invisible. Yeah. Um, it's hard to make those choices because, see, Superman didn't limit my opportunities. <laughs> he created so many that I was too young too and too immature to understand them. Yeah. And in a ways, I was miscast or made mistakes, whatever, which now, um, after being a film actor for 15 years and a theater actor for 25 years, now I feel, okay, I'm really ready. And so mm -hmm. the process for me actually was uh, people watched me learn how to act for the camera in front, you know, in 1,500 theaters and huge, I mean, I didn't do it yeah. by playing supporting parts in, in NYU student films or something. Mm -hmm. I did it big time right in front of you. Right. And that to me, you know, uh, was, a, was a kind of interesting way to go. And I think all you need, all you need to do really is it's one part that makes money. That's all there yeah. is to it. Are the guys going around claiming they turned it down because they knew that would happen to them and they wouldn't didn't want to mess no. with it? No. In fact, what happened? Uh. What happened was is that before Superman one, these films tended to be black and white B pictures cast with kind of insignificant actors. I don't mean to be rude, but basically yeah. they're not major major actors. Right. And Superman one was the first film to make big screen. Dolby stereo, convincing special effects, and to try to make this sort of real. And now every uh -huh. actor, now you've got What's legitimate actors who have no intention of being typecast. Dustin Hoffman as Hook. I mean, Robin Williams has played Popeye and Peter Pan in the same career. Plus, <laughs> right. he's up for an Academy Awards for Awakening. So, uh, Michelle okay. Pfeiffer's Catwoman. We set, we started because we had Gene Hackman and Marlon Brando and Trevor Howard, and Susanna York, and right. Jeffrey Unsworth as a cameraman. So I feel, in a way, I was part of a pioneering effort. Yeah. And. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. It's your show. What you, am I doing? That's true. <laughs> ne never talk when I even look like I'm going yes, to. Yes, sir. Uh, mm. the, uh, did what Jack Nicholson calls the man on the hill give you any tips? Um, I, I want to collect a book of tips like Walter Brennan. I got to be on a series episode once, mm -hmm. Western, and he said, I noticed something. Always look at the other person, a, a kid, with your oh. down camera eye because it gets more of your face on the screen. I would love to find a book of 100 wisdoms like that from screen actors. I can throw in one real quick. You know, all everybody, right. all, the, all the screen actors out there <laughs> or would be. Um, that camera, that as it comes close to you, there is a tendency, as they push the camera closer, it's an intrusion in your reality, yeah. and people's attention level tends to increase, particularly when they're coming in for close-ups. Right. And so the viewer's attention level increases. No, the actor's the actors atten actors his tension the level. Oh, tension level. Yeah. Okay. And so what happens is I mean, a, a camera right. has to be absolutely ignored in order to be won over completely. Doesn't that take zen concentration, though? No. It takes relaxation. In fact, the, the less hard you try, the better you do. Uh -huh. And so the, the one tip is, is try to act in your close-up with the same ease that you did the off-camera for the other guy. For those of you who don't know, off-camera. Boy, camera, you're, you're so right about that, and I didn't yeah. realize it. I, the off-camera is when they're on, say they're on Dick's close-up, and I'm going to yeah. sit the lines of the scene, and they'll film him. Notice now the camera's not in on me, so I'm totally relaxed. Well, when they turn it around and come in here, don't let that layer That's of artifice right. increase. That's right. This That's is an insight. Yeah. Uh, a lot of actors uh, have uh, one, among, among my pictures is one I made with my friend, my dear friend Michael Keaton, whom I didn't meet. I, I, I was in Beetlejuice <laughs> for, what was I, I in three, three and a half minutes? Uh -huh. You probably timed it, I did. And uh, I remember they said, now we're doing the close-up. And I thought, oh, now I've got to really say this right. Yeah. See, now and you immediately a, I clench. Yeah, you put a pressure on yourself. And, yeah. and, and you've got to be absolutely just at ease so the camera Thank can you. eavesdrop and, and pick up reality. And you, if you try to sell your reality in any way, then it comes across as acting, and then you're in trouble. You know, that, that's so interesting, that I forgot words of what I asked. Oh, I wonder, did Brando ever lean in and say, uh, never turn right with your shoulder lowered, or any, anything like Brando that? Brando actually didn't have two words to say to me. Did he say, don't let him no. push you around, kid? That's what was quoted in something. It's your no. picture, don't let him he push He did. Around. We had an episode, actually, Brando was supposed to, it was supposed to be in Superman 2. And we shot some sequences of Superman 2 before we did one. Then for various legal reasons, he was not in Superman 2. But day one of working with Brando was a scene in which we were working together. 
and I, Superman had lost his powers, and, and he's supposed to reach out and touch me on the shoulder and give the powers back. The script says that Superman reacts as though sort of like electricity is going through his body. Now, uh -huh. I mean, that hasn't happened to me lately, so I'm, I'm giving an impression of what this would be like. <laughs> yeah. And uh -huh. I'm doing it, and they're on me. My close-up, Brando's off camera, and I start to do it, and I'm supposed to have this, this electrical thing happen, then collapse on the floor, and I get up to see him smirking. There's this little uh -huh. smile on his face that he's like, and I don't know where this courage came from, but I turned to him and said, listen, I don't know how to do this, but I sure am trying. And I'd appreciate it if we could work together on this. Or words to that effect, yeah. said with a certain amount of in intensity. Was that when he broke a jaw? No, that's when he sent me the flowers and, <laughs> the, and, the, f and the candy from Fort Nimmon Nason and, and said, I, 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 I really respect what you're trying to I do here. I remember Miss Hepburn praising you for going up with all those people and not losing your cool. <laughs>